So if you're watching this, you're probably my friend or family. But in case you don't know me and you're just watching this because you are, I don't know why you are. I talk a lot, just as a warning. Um, my name is Valentina. I'm 20 years old. I live in Orlando, Florida. So presently I'm in Palm City, Florida, which... Anyway. And this is the story of my coming out. This video was inspired by Lucy and Kaylin, who are in a long distance relationship and on YouTube and both made videos about their coming out stories and also by the fact that I am officially out to everyone. I mean other than people I have not yet met. Everybody pretty much knows that I'm a lesbian. So yeah, let's just say it right now. I'm a lesbian. I'm gay. Um, how did I come to realize this? Well, I'm from Chile. Chile, if you don't know, it's a very Catholic, close-minded, everyone has to do the same, we're all robots here, like cookie cutter kind of country. I love it. I love my country. I'm so proud to be Chilean. I am ridiculously proud to be Chilean. That doesn't mean that there, there are things about that country I don't like. I never fit in. I'm too much of an individual. I'm too much of my own person to fit in there. So um, six years ago, six and a half years ago-ish, we moved to the U.S. with my family for, you know, reasons like my dad's job and my brother. It, long story. And moving to the U.S. made my family a lot more open-minded and accepting that they than we ever would have been if we had still been that been, been living in Chile. Okay, so see now you can tell I'm originally not from here, even though I have a good American accent. Um, so the first. Okay, I have had three boyfriends. All of them have lasted less than a month and a half. I feel physically uncomfortable when a guy gets too close to me in a, not like any guy. You know, I, I have guy, well, I don't have any, I don't have a lot of guy friends. But, you know, I can be with guys. It's just if I think they are going to hit on me, if I think they are going to try to kiss me or touch me, I get really really uncomfortable and that should have been like a big red flag when I was in seventh grade but it wasn't I was still in denial I it took me a long time for me to accept myself the way that I am and eventually moving to the US was a big factor in that the first time that I had like a conscious thought about not being straight because back then I didn't know what I was was in 2008 I believe when I was a sophomore in high school and I called my best friend I talked to a bunch of friends I talked to a friend who was bi and I was like what if I'm bi and it just didn't feel right it that like that label didn't fit me so I just kind of shoved it to the back of my mind and just forgot it not forgot about it but you know pretended to forget about it for a couple of years and it was in 2010 that I had a friend who you know I think I think I was attracted to her. I don't think I had feelings for her, but it was very eye-opening in a way because it made me realize like, hey, there's more to this than just attraction to girls. And um, so in 2010, I moved back to Chile for a couple of months and I was there with my family one day. We were driving through this small town and we saw two guys holding hands. I didn't see them, but my cousin and my uncle did. And so it you know, brought up this conversation about how they thought it was weird and they thought it was abnormal and all this stuff and I'm sitting in the back seat just on the verge of tears because I didn't know what I was but I knew I wasn't straight. I was getting to the point where I was finally accepting myself and or at least accepting that I wasn't straight. So um my cousin said I don't I don't want to say any of it because I, I you know he's my cousin and I do love him. But, you know, he said some pretty serious stuff that really, really scared me and it made me realize, what if I'm not straight and I can't ever come out to my family because they won't accept me? So that's, you know, where I was in 2010. Um, I came back to the U.S. in 2011 and, you know, slowly started accepting the fact that I wasn't straight, that, you know, I didn't know what I was. And basically back then I would say I... I am a girl who likes boys and sometimes girls. Funny because that's not true, but you know, people change, things change. Sexuality is a lot more fluid than people realize and moving here was very eye-opening in that sense. Um, so 
in April of 2011, I met somebody who I became very close with in like no time, a girl, obviously. And in June, I developed feelings for her. In July, she told me that she had the same, you know, she returned my feelings. Things didn't work out between us for a lot of reasons. But having feelings for her made me realize that I could have feelings for a girl because up until that moment, I didn't know. I thought that, you know, I could... I would be attracted to girls. I knew I was I was attracted to girls. I just didn't know if I was ever going to have feelings for a girl, if I could see myself settling down with a girl. And having feelings for her was, you know, a big part of my realizing who I am. So, um, then, obviously that didn't work out. In December, my mom and I were driving up to Orlando for a tour of UCF. And she kind of brought it up in conversation. It was very, very um, smooth of her. We were talking about my friends. And then she was like, don't you ever worry that your friends might take this affection that you feel for them? Because I'm a very, I'm a very overprotective person. I'm a very nurturing person. So she goes, you know, um, don't you worry that your friends might take that affection, like that friendly affection as, you know, romantic feelings. And I'm like, I, where are you going with this? So I told her, at the moment, this was December of 2011, at the moment moment I was identifying as pansexual, which for those of you who might not know what it means, it means that you are basically gender blind, that you don't, you you're, aren't attracted to people because of their gender, but because of their personality and who they are as a person. This is still true to a degree because I'm more, I can't, I don't, I, I don't feel attraction for people I just meet. Like, I don't see somebody on the street and go, oh, like, look how cute she is. I notice attractive people. I'm not blind to attractive people. But when I feel honestly and truly attracted to somebody is when I already kind of met them and know who they are as a person. That's a big factor for me. So um, then I moved to Orlando. And I was in the college program and I, you know, still had feelings for this girl kind of ongoing, but we didn't talk for a while. So in June, I started dating somebody and she was great for a first girlfriend. Like I couldn't have asked for a better first girlfriend. I, we broke up after two months because I still had feelings for this first girl, but it was, you know, a very... It was a very good experience for me to have because it it allowed me to date a girl and see how I like that. And I can t honestly tell you, I mean, this it was partly that and just partly moving to Orlando that made me realize that I was a lesbian. I, I mean, sexuality is fluid, right? Like, why do I have to worry about labels? I'm 20 years old. There are people who don't realize their sexuality until they're 40 or 50 or older. Why does it matter? As of right now, it is my personal decision to identify as a lesbian. Oh, my dog's on the window barking at me. Whatever. Anyway. It is my personal decision to identify as a lesbian. If I were to say, you know what, I'm not identifying as anything except, you know, I'm a girl who dates girls. I don't date guys. I don't like guys. So be it. My decision. My, it's my life, you know. And I respect everybody in my life very much. I appreciate their opinions. I appreciate their support. That doesn't change that you can ask me, are you sure you're a lesbian? And I will still say, you know, that's my decision. With all due respect, none of your business. So, August of, I mean, sometime when she and I were dating, um, I came out to my three closest cousins and they were very supportive somewhat surprised somewhat expecting it but I came out to them and then in July my grandparents came to visit my whole family came to visit Orlando and it was just really tense because I was dating this girl but my grandparents didn't know anything like but then my dad said that he talked to my grandfather and that my grandfather you know suspected something but still wasn't sure 
I don't know if I'm gonna tell my grandparents. They might see this. If you are, I hope you can accept me for what I am. Anyway, um, if my grandparents are watching this, I hope you can accept this. If you can't, if any anyone watching this can't accept this, well, I'm sorry, you don't belong in my life. It's as simple as that. If you're not gonna accept me and love me for who I am, I don't have to care about you. I don't have to be okay with that. I will give you time to accept it and deal with it. If you're my family, you're never gonna stop being my family. That doesn't mean that I have to accept you if you're not okay with me. If you respect me and my decision and who I am as a person, I will respect you. If you don't, too bad. So, um, my parents asked me repeatedly if I was going to tell them, and I didn't. I was too afraid to. I wasn't ready to come out to them, and I don't know. I mean, they might see this, but I don't know if I'm ever going to be ready to confront them about this. Maybe a couple years down the road, maybe a couple months down the road, maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and to say, oh, today sounds like a good day to come out to my grandparents. Anyway, um, so then that brings us to now. There hasn't really been anything interesting in my life the last couple months. I'm not dating. I'm not, not going to go there. Um, so this brings us to now. Last night, Obama was reelected for president, and I was crying and shaking when I heard because I was honestly terrified that Romney would win. And through the last couple of weeks I have been posting a lot about my political views on Facebook but I felt I still felt like I couldn't say who you know why I support Obama so much why I'm so against Romney there are a lot more reasons than my sexuality that factor it you know inf influence my political views just in general I s whatever it this is not a video about politics it's a video about that's kind of cool. I just get to talk about myself for like 15 minutes. Anyway, but my relief at Obama winning for another four years and knowing that I can still be myself and live in this country and I don't have to move to Canada um, was so great. And I was a little drunk, so I decided to post on Facebook that, you know, I said my first status was thank you, Obama, because now I can marry you know, I can get married, and I can still get married in this country, and no, not to a guy. I posted that, but, like, only one person could see it by accident, so then I reposted something, basically making it very clear that I was, I am gay. A lot of, a few people, not a lot of people, like two people, weren't sure if I was being sarcastic, if I was act. No, I'm gay. Let me reassure you of that. Or at least, you know, that I identify as a lesbian. Um, I've talked to two of my cousins so far from Chile, and one of them already knew, the other one didn't, but he said that he's very accepting of me, and I really appreciate that because I, I know his views, I know how he is, but, you know, maybe, I hope that my presence in their lives will open their eyes to different sexualities and being more accepting of that. So far, my family has accepted me. And that's more than I could ask for. And um, and then I heard that the cousin who in 2010 said some terrible things that really scared me was surprised but very understanding. So my, I'm very relieved to hear that so far reactions are good. But, you know, my parents and the people who matter the most in my life support me. I had an incredible amount of people telling me that they support me um, last night on Facebook. So many people were telling me that they love me and that they're proud of me and that they're happy for me. Like a hundred or more people like that status on Facebook. It's a ridiculous amount of support and I feel so loved. I feel so accepted. So, you know, a couple of people, no matter who they are, if they don't accept me, they don't accept me. I can't change that. They can change that. I can't. Having me in their lives might change that, but I'm not going to waste my time trying to change somebody's mind if they're not going to accept me. Why? Why would I do that? So, uh, long story short, for me, now that, you know, I have accepted my sexuality for over a year and I have come to terms with who I am and I know I'm not straight, I don't know, maybe I'll find out, you know, maybe I'll pick a different label next year. Who knows? I'm not straight. I am not attracted to guys. I am not interested in guys, period. But 
um, for me, a lot of it, you know, it took five, six years for me to accept this. Subconsciously, I have known for a long time. My first celebrity crush was a girl. In my innocent fourth grade daydreams, you know, we were best friends. But I knew I had a crush on her. Not celebrity crush, but a crush like I was attracted. You know, not attracted because I was in fourth grade. But I, I, you know, I liked her. Like, liked her. Um, and then in eighth grade, I had a dream that a friend and I were looking for, like, we were on a class trip and we were looking for a room so we could make out. And it was a girl and it didn't bother me. And then what? You know, it was, a lot of it was my upbring, upbringing. I was raised Catholic. I consider myself agnostic. That might change. It might not. I don't know. But I was raised Catholic. I, you know, come from a very close-minded country that tends to be very homophobic. And that had a lot to do with my accepting myself. Not even, like, you know, at the end of the day, the only person whose acceptance I need is my own. And I'm happy. I accept myself. That's what matters. That took me five, six years. Because I denied it for a long time. I suppressed it. I pretended not to think about it. I pretended it didn't exist. It didn't happen. Whatever. But, you know, I'm happy. I, I like myself. I like being a lesbian. I don't want to date a guy. I don't want to marry a guy. I want to marry a girl. And thanks to our president, thanks to me living in this country, I can. One day, you know, not in Florida. God, no, not in Florida. But one day, you know, I will meet that girl and I'll get married and have kids and, you know, settle down. And I'm still always going to be who I am. This is just another part of me and it doesn't change who I am as a person. It just makes me, I don't know how to explain it. This is just part of who I am. I am, I'm Valentina, 20 years old, almost 21, only 12 days till my birthday. Um, I'm a lesbian. I am very stubborn and headstrong and I am my own person. I don't like letting other people step on me. I am obsessed with Glee in an unhealthy way. I like gay couples in general. That should have been another big clue. You know, I'm from Chile. I speak Spanish fluently. I'm going to go to UCF next semester for public relations or journalism. I don't know yet. You know, it's just, it's another fact on a long list of things about me. That's it. That, that's all there is to it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I have been talking for 20 minutes, and I really appreciate it if you've actually sat down and, you know, listened to all of this. You probably have another tab open where you're doing something else and are, like, absentmindedly listening to me. But you know what? If you get to this point of the video, mwah, I love you all. Thank you for accepting me. If you don't accept me, well, I already said what I think.